Sensitivity is one of those settings that gets talked about all the time, and for good reasons. Having the right sensitivity can make a world of difference in helping you aim, land those important shots, build efficiently, and keep you from messing up your edits. Along with keybinds, they're the most important settings you need to make sure you're comfortable using and fit with how you play. What's up everybody, it's Dan here again, this time with a guide to help you find the perfect sensitivity. Finally arriving at your perfect sense can take a while, but you should get it done at some point. It's a much better alternative than playing match after match with control settings that make you constantly mess up. We'll start with a brief discussion about baseline values and what those mean, then we'll go over some in-game drills to help you adjust and find your perfect sensitivity. We're going to talk about both controllers and mice, so don't worry. No matter what device you play with, there will be something for you in this video. Before we get started, we have a small announcement to make. We're adding a ton of new features to our site, exclusive guide and analysis videos for our pro members. Also, ProPass now grants access to all games. We also have more free coaching passes and points for Instapro if you're a pro member, so head on over to ProGuides.com by clicking the link in the description below. Whether you set your sensitivity to something high or low all essentially comes down to preference. Some players prefer high sensitivity so they can perform rapid movements, while others prefer low sensitivities so that they can be more precise. At the end of the day, what you choose all comes down to how you play and what feels comfortable. But obviously, there's still such a thing as too high or too low of a sensitivity. That's where baselines can help you. You use them to figure out if you're too far away from the norm. Once you've chosen one, you would then make adjustments to that baseline to help you come to a sensitivity that you're okay with. For example, a common baseline for mouse and keyboard players is a sensitivity that performs a 360 degree turn when you move from one end of the mouse pad to the other. While you obviously won't be doing 360s very often, the point is to help ensure that there's enough room to comfortably move around. Since mouse pads come in different shapes and sizes, they can act as a restriction to what sensitivities can work. And so this baseline helps quickly determine a playable sensitivity no matter the setup. Controllers don't really have a similar method to use as a baseline, so instead, as the video progresses, we'll be discussing the common sensitivity ranges most controller pros fall in. If you compare those with your current sensitivities, that should give you an idea of whether or not your settings are ideal. If they're way off, you can always refer to our ultimate controller sensitivity guide. That video goes over the best settings for controllers and provides examples of optimal values you can use as a starting point before making adjustments. Okay, so before you start adjusting your sensitivity, it's important to make sure that you're not warmed up yet. If you just played a few games or spent some time in creative, you're going to be used to whatever sensitivity you're on, even if it's not the right one for you. Instead, what we're trying to find here is a sensitivity that feels natural, one that feels good to you even if you haven't warmed up yet. Not that you shouldn't warm up or anything, that'll still help you improve and play better than if you didn't. But again, we're looking for sensitivities that are intuitive to play on no matter how built up your muscle memory is. Start by loading up Creative and either setting up a shooting gallery from under the device menu or hopping into your favorite aim training course. Give yourself some weapons you commonly use since you'll be testing out your shots in a bit. If you're using a mouse, this is a good time to test out the 360 degree baseline. As long as you come somewhat close to a full spin moving from one end of the mouse pad to the other, then you have a good baseline to start from. X and Y Sensitivity First, you want to find your X and Y sensitivities. You use these general sensitivities to land flick shots, hip fire in close range gunfights, and also just to look around with. If you play with a mouse and keyboard, it's also the sensitivity you build with, so those areas are what you should be trying to get a feel on. Start off by walking up close to any target and trying to track it while strafing left and right. After about a minute or so, start testing your hip fire flick shots, then try out different building techniques you use and see if you can do that comfortably. At this point, you can start making adjustments based on your results. For instance, if you were often over aiming on flicks, that might be because your sense is too high. If you were under aiming and not able to reach your target a lot, then your sensitivity might be too low. The same thing applies to how your tracking and building went. Adjust with small incremental changes like only a few notches up or down, then go back and do the same test to see how the changes feel. Eventually, after several adjustments, you should end up at a sensitivity that works for you. Try and spend a good amount of time coming to a final sensitivity. It's very important to go through at least five or six test cycles before coming to your conclusion. Be critical about your test results so that you can fine tune your sensitivity as much as possible. Don't just think, well, this is fine after the first two tests because there's probably a better sensitivity that you just haven't tried yet. Also, just a quick note on XY sensitivities. Some players prefer having a different Y sensitivity because that's how it was in the past. Since we now have access to both values, a lot of players set them the same just to be more consistent. If you're used to a lower Y sense because that's just what you've stuck with since then, there's nothing wrong with keeping it that way. It really doesn't make too much of a difference, but if you're looking to aim as consistently as possible, try setting them to the same value if they aren't already. 
All right, next you want to move on to your targeting and scope sensitivities. You normally aim down sights whenever fighting somebody at medium or long distances. At those ranges, your opponent's movement doesn't translate to much on your screen. There'll be a small figure moving slowly across your screen, and so you'll need a low sense to make the precise adjustments needed to accurately track them. That's why most players don't keep the default value of 1 here. You're pretty much going to run another set of tests here to help you get an understanding of your current values. Set yourself up first at a medium distance, then at a long one, and practice your ADS tracking on moving targets. After that, try out some target swapping. Not necessarily at your fastest flicking speed, but how you would normally swap between targets in a game at those distances. After a few minutes of testing, you should again head into the settings menu and make your adjustments based on how it felt. Keep testing and adjusting until you find what works. Just to give you an idea, most controller pros out there tend to have their targeting and scope senses between 0.2 and 0.5. For keyboard and mouse players, that average range is a bit higher, at 0.4 to 0.7. Some pros and streamliners out there even go as high as the default of 1, but we honestly wouldn't recommend it with just how imprecise long range aiming becomes. But ultimately, it's going to be your choice which values you choose here. Now for building sensitivity. This is a setting only for controller users, but just in case everyone gets it in the future, keyboard and mouse players should pay attention too. The reason that this is even a controller-only option is that historically, controllers have had a hard time building with just the normal X and Y sensitivities. Building isn't something you need a lot of precision for, so speed starts to become a more important factor. A good rule of thumb is to always set this value to something above 1. What you do set it to honestly depends on which end of the spectrum you ended up at with your X and Y values. If you're on the low end of X and Y sensitivities because you prefer precision over fast movements, like around 0.6, you'll need to bump this value up to around 1.7 to 2. If your X and Ys are already pretty fast, like closer to 1.0, then you can set this to something lower, like around 1.2-ish. But again, like with the other sections, you're going to want to test it out and make many adjustments as you see fit. Spend some time trying out 90s, building 1x1s, tunneling, ramp rushing, and doing whatever else you build in-game. If building feels slow and you find yourself having to wait for your crosshair to be in the right spot a lot of the time, then your building sense is probably too low. If your crosshairs feel erratic and hard to control when you build, then it might be too high. The most important thing here is making sure you can comfortably pull off whatever building techniques you use, so always test them out after each change until you eventually arrive at what feels the best to you. When setting your controller editing sensitivity, you pretty much want to follow the same rules as with building sense. You don't need too much precision when editing, as you're just selecting large boxes on your screen. What's more important here is speed, which will help you keep up with mouse and keyboard players. So in most cases, you're going to end up with something very similar to your building sense. You can always set up some build to help you practice editing, but usually it's better to load into an editing course where all the structures are conveniently laid out for you. If you don't want to choose from, check out Cell Age's Shotgun Aim and Edit course for a quick run that has you editing a ton and swapping to weapons. This should give you a good and realistic feel on making edit plays while you're testing your edit sends. While you're running through the course, take notes on the mistakes you're making. For example, if you keep missing pieces with your corner edits and end up making doors instead, then your editing sends might be too low. But if you shoot across the whole wall and punch an extra square that you didn't mean to, then it's too high. Editing is something that takes a ton of practice to get really good at, so don't beat yourself up if you keep messing up. Just try to pay attention to how your sensitivity might be affecting the way you edit. Keep making adjustments as you see fit until editing and going for a shot starts feeling easy and intuitive. Some players like to constantly swap sensitivities when they aren't playing well in hopes that it'll make them better, but honestly, that's a bad practice to follow. You just end up losing the progress you've made getting used to your sends. It's a better idea instead to go through all that trial and error in creative until you finally find the settings that you're comfortable with. Then, every time you play a game or warm up, it's the same settings you're working on perfecting, not a set of new ones. We know all this testing you have to do here can take a while, but trust us, it's so worth it. Once you're able to make enough adjustments with each setting, you should be able to arrive at sensitivities that are in tune with your playstyle. Everybody plays and controls the game differently, so it's important to always try to arrive at your own preferred settings. While you can copy the settings of someone you trust, you should still be testing them out to see what changes can be made to better fit your gameplay. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you give a like and share it with your friends, and subscribe because we have a lot more great videos coming at you every single day. Thanks again guys, and good luck with your Fortnite grind.